welcome to the Life After Plus One podcast, where we turn life's lemons into delightful lemonade. Get ready for inspiring stories, uplifting conversations, and all the tips and tricks to rock your single parent journey with style. I'm your host, Leanne, and it's time to embrace the adventure of Life After Plus One. So let's dive in. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Life After Plus One. I'm Leanne, your podcast host, your single parent mentor and coach. And today I want to talk about the topic of kids' behaviors. Why do they act up when they're just come home from the other parent's house? Or why do they put on a little tantrum refusing to go to the other parent's house? Or their little behaviors that they have. What is this about? Is it because they're living in a single parent house? What is the problem? Let's talk about this. Now, this is something I have definitely experienced myself and kids know how to milk it, especially when we're single parents and we're on our own. We don't have anyone to back us up. Our kids can push us to the limit where we just give in and say, fine, just do whatever. Just don't give me a hard time. We give in to them and the kids know how to milk that. They know how to get what they want from us and they know how to put on their little behaviors They know how to do it to get what they want. And I've actually called my daughter out on this in a few times and she's given me a little smirk in return. I'm like, yeah, I see you, kid. I know what you're doing. But it's easy to fall for it. It's easy to fall for these little behaviors and these little games that they play thinking, oh, no, what's what's going on? What's happening? And I can give you an example of something that I went through recently with my daughter. And for a while, she refused to be picked up from school on a Friday afternoon when it was her dad's weekend by him. And I had no idea why. And I, she just kept, I mean, she didn't go into it in detail. She just said, no, I don't want him to pick me up from school. Can you pick me up? And then he can pick me up from here, from home. So, okay. I didn't really go into it. I knew there wasn't something wrong because she was still going to his house. And then now that school's gone back, we're back into this routine again. And it's her weekend going to her dad's. And I said, he's picking you up from school. It's Friday afternoon, he's picking you up, so just look out for him this afternoon. I drop her at school on the Friday morning and he'll go pick her up. And she's like, no, mum, I don't want him to pick me up from school. Can you pick me up? And I'm like, darling, I've got things on. It just works so much easier if he can just pick you up instead of me having to drop what I'm doing, go pick you up, and then he just comes back and picks you up. What's the difference? And then I sat down and had a talk to her. And then all these weeks, so even though school's just gone back this year, It was happening at the end of last year and throughout that year where she didn't want him to pick him up from school. So we finally sat down and we had a talk. I'm like, what's going on? What's happened? And I found out, my daughter probably killed me for saying this. She's now at an age where it's not cool for mum or dad to give you a kiss in the school ground. I can't even give her a kiss in the car anymore to say goodbye. And that's what I like doing. I like having that little last little goodbye kiss when she goes to school and say, have a good day. But I discovered that all this time of her not wanting her dad to pick her up from school was purely because she got embarrassed because when he would pick her up, clearly because he doesn't see her as often as I do, I don't run up and give her a kiss and a hug when I see her at school pick up every day. So he will give her a kiss and a hug every time he sees her at school pick up. And she's like, Mum, I don't like it. It's embarrassing. And then I realized, okay, that makes sense. This is why she's been wanting me to pick her up from school all the time, even when it's his weekend. And that's what kids do. Kids don't know how to communicate things like us adults do. And they might put on little behaviors and they might misbehave in some way. And, you know, she sometimes goes in these little habits of refusing to go to her dad's. But there's always an underlying issue. It's always something. If I know there's no problems there, then I know there's something not, like there's nothing negative happening that I need to be concerned about, then there's no reason why she can't go. Boredom is not a good enough reason because she's pulled that card on me before. I'm bored. I maximize my kid-free time or my kid-free weekend with stuff that I need to get done. And she needs to respect that because when I have her, I don't stop. I'm not counting down the days to I'm kid free so I can have my me time. But I I do look forward to it because that's the time I can do stuff without having to work around my daughter or be home by set time or do school pick up or school drop off or sports activities. I've got my whole weekend where I can just do my podcast recording or I can catch up with friends or I can just go to the beach or just do absolutely nothing. So when my daughter tries to play these games where she milks it and refuses to go to her dad's, 
it's quite easy for me to give in and go, okay, sure, just just stay here. Just if you don't want to go, don't go. But then I picked up a new tactic and I said to her, no, you're going to your father's. If you want to come home early, you're more than welcome to, but you're going on this day, which is usually the Friday or whatever day it is. And she'd fight it. And then it wasn't until a couple of weeks ago she went there and she put on the biggest tantrum, refusing to go, because that's what they do. Refusing to go to the other parent's house, her dad's house, I should say. And it's so easy And it could have been so easy for me in that moment to say, okay, fine. If you don't want to go, don't go. Because I don't like forcing my daughter to do things that she doesn't want to do. Because she put on a big act about it, refusing to go. There was tears and everything. And I'm like, part of me is thinking, okay, shit, maybe I should just keep her home. But part of me is thinking, I know she knows how to milk things. I know she knows how to get what she wants. So I said to her, I said, no, last fortnight you didn't go. Something happened. We had plans on. It's only fair. He wants to see you. You need to go to his house. You need to go see your father. If you want to come home early, you call me up and we can work it out from there. Cut a long story short, she was there the whole weekend. I have no problems with that. And then I spoke to her, I think on the Saturday night, well, she speaks to me every night when she's there. She likes to give me a little FaceTime call to say goodnight. So whenever she's ready to go to bed, she'll FaceTime me. And then I think it was a Saturday night she FaceTimed me and she was dancing and she's doing all this silly stuff. But I said, oh, you look really happy. And she goes, yeah. And I said, that's really good. And I said, so why did you cry yesterday? And she just stopped. And she's like, oh. It's like I called her out. And that's my point. Kids know how to milk things. Like there was tears and everything from her because she was refusing to go. And it's quite easy to, because I don't have the best of relationships with her father, it's quite easy to go, yeah, he's an asshole. Don't worry about it. Just stay with me. But... He's an asshole towards me. He's not an asshole towards my daughter. So I can separate those two. And in his defense, he did want to see her. And she was putting on a big act, refusing to go. She did say, oh, you know, I like our time together. It was school holidays. I like our time together. I just wanted to spend more time with you. So that is nice. And I do get that. But kids know how to milk it. To go from one minute having tears, refusing to go, and then the next day I speak to her that Saturday evening to have for a FaceTime chat, and she's dancing, looking very happy. And I'm like, oh, was it really worth you getting this upset about yesterday over not going? She goes, yeah, I'm sorry, mummy. She she did. She apologised and said, I'm sorry. This is what I'm getting at. And I see this a lot on social media and different posts and pages around with parents getting on saying, my kid refuses to go or my kid's refusing this or my kid's refusing that. And it's quite easy to jump on the bandwagon of thinking your ex is an asshole and go, yeah, okay, fine, don't go. Where see, I'm now in that headspace where I love my kid free time and I'm happy for her to stay with me. I love my time with my daughter. I love it. Love it. But I don't have family around me. I don't have support where I am. I'm 100% on my own. So those two days a fortnight that I get to myself I love they're my days where I can actually see friends and do stuff and that's two days a fortnight to myself is not a lot when you're doing everything else all on your own and as you all know as single parents you get it and I know there are other people out there who have care a hundred percent of the time and it is extremely difficult but there's also people around that do have family and support and friends around that they can rely on I don't have any family around that I can use for babysitters and I'm not complaining, I'm not whinging or moaning, I deal with my situation. So that is why I like to make the most of those two days I get to myself every fortnight. And what I'm getting at is I do see a lot of parents that just easily give in and they easily cave to their kids' requests and it's very important to really look into it, look into where they're coming from. Are they milking it? Or is there some seriousness behind it? If there is no physical harm, there's no emotional or verbal abuse or anything of that matter, then there is no reason why you should cave to their request of them not wanting to go. Because you need your time. You need your time to yourself. And you need to look after you. You can't be the best version of you if you're constantly on go. You need to learn to switch off. And our kid-free time is the time that we get to switch off. So going back to the point, when kids react the way they do, it's them milking things from us. They know how to get what they want from us. 
And I am a big culprit of this. And at night time, or my daughter's hungry and I've started dinner late or much later than normal because I've had things on or I've just got home and I'm tired. So I just decided to have a rest before I started cooking. As you do, right? Single parent life. We don't have people helping us. And then she's come to me when it's probably getting close to dinner time. And she's like, mom, I'm hungry. Can I just have an ice cream? And I'm like, no, it's dinner time. But then I look at the clock and I think, oh, shit, I haven't started dinner yet. It's going to take some time to ha- for me to get up and cook. And then I just give in. I'm like, oh, just have something little. It's easy to do that when we don't have someone that's helping us to say, oh, honey, can you go start dinner or can you go do this while I'm looking after the kids? You don't have that. So it's very easy to give in to their needs and give in to their little requests to get things from us. And they are experts at doing that. They know how to do that. Now, when kids get to a certain age, it's very important for them to have a little bit of control and a little bit of say in their life. But you've also got to remember still that they're the kid and you're the parent. So when it gets to a point when they're trying to be a little bit controlling over you by manipulating their emotions, which means to put on a little act unnecessarily so they can get what they want, then we need to step in as the parent and not just give in so easily. So like, for example, when I said to my daughter when she was going to her dad's and she didn't want to go, I gave her the option. That's fine. You can go, but you're more than welcome to come back here whenever you want. If you want to come back Saturday afternoon, if you want to come back Sunday morning, if you want to come back earlier, I'm totally fine with that. You just give me a call and you let me know. And she didn't come home early and I didn't have a problem with that, but that's just it. I gave her that option. And a lot of the times these behaviors are a result of the kids not having control or say over their own life. Because my daughter has said it to me a few times, mum, I'm allowed to decide what I want to do. If I don't want to go there, I shouldn't have to be forced to. And that's what it comes down to. They feel like they're being forced to do something and kids don't like being forced to do anything. Even as adults, we don't like it. If we're going somewhere because we're told we have to, we probably lose a lot of interest in it. We're like, fuck, I'm not going. And it gets like that with the whole co-parenting thing. When they're going to the other parent's house just because that's the routine and that's what they have to do, they start losing interest. So start putting it on them. Start giving them a little bit of the control or a little bit of the say. Ask them what they would like done differently. Ask them what can be done to enjoy their time more. Giving my daughter that option of coming home earlier if she wanted to gave her a little bit of the control. So when she faced on me that night on Saturday night and she was all happy and I said, it's nice to see you happy. I said, so you're coming home early? She goes, oh, I might, but I'll probably just come home Sunday night, which is normal or sometimes even to Monday morning. And I said, that's fine. That's cool. But she had that option and she had a bit of say over the situation. And that's what kids want, especially as they're getting older. When they get older is when they usually start to act up and they start to misbehave about going there or about doing something because they're being forced to do it. They're being forced to do it. And another scenario I found out with my daughter is they were only doing things that she wasn't enjoying. When they were going places, it was the beach or the park. My daughter's now at an age where she wasn't enjoying the beach. She's getting sick of the sand, which is crazy. The parks are now too young for her. She's getting too old to go to the parks and play with these young kids. So that was another reason she was not wanting to go there because she felt like whenever she was, that's all they were doing. And I said, well, darling, you need to say this. You need to tell them that. And a lot of these behaviors come from kids not knowing how to communicate how they're feeling or what's wrong. And it's our job as their parents to find that out, to sit down and talk to them. We can't expect them to communicate their problems if we're not sitting down with them and letting them communicate them with us. So I don't like to get involved with things that her dad does at his house. It's not my business. But I did bring this up because for some reason she feels more comfortable to talk to me than she does her dad, which is not a bad reflection on any parent because it's quite common for kids to feel more comfortable with one parent over the other parent. Quite often, this will relate to the parent that is the primary carer. If you are the primary carer and you have the kids the majority of the time, more often than not, the kids will be more comfortable with you than they are with the other parent. And it's quite common for kids to not speak up or express how they feel or express what they want when they're with that other parent that they don't see as much. 
I know when I was a kid, my parents co-parented and I had to go visit my dad every second weekend, similar to my daughter. And I didn't speak up with my dad the way I did with my mum because I was with my mum all the time. It's always very different when you're visiting that parent who you don't see as regularly as you do the primary carer. And you're more inclined to be, well, the kids are more inclined to be on their best behavior with that other parent. Unless it's someone who you maybe got 50-50 and it's probably equal care. But if it's a parent that's not as frequently involved and it's maybe a once a fortnight visit, then there's a good chance that child or the kids will not be as comfortable in speaking up with that parent as they are with the primary carer who they're with every day. So this is what comes down to kids misbehaving. And it all comes down to us as their parent to work out where this is stemming from. And a lot of it is just something minor. So when my daughter was refusing to go to her dad's over the holidays and I figured out it was just because she was over going to the beach and the park, it was a simple fix as me sending him a message and saying, please don't take this the wrong way. She's now growing up. She's now got different interests. These are things that she's not really interested in doing. And I did word that in a very neutral tone. I wasn't having a dig at him. I wasn't having a go at him because I didn't want him to think that I was attacking him saying, well, why are you only doing this with her? Because that wasn't the case. And I was just letting him know her needs have changed. Her likes have changed and what she likes doing. And she's not so much interested in doing these activities anymore. And he actually made an effort the next time she was there. They went out for the whole day and he took them somewhere very different. And so now this weekend that she's there, which will be last weekend when this actually goes live. I had no issues with dropping her off from school on the Friday morning because normally when it comes to Friday morning, I get tears and tantrums. No, mum, please, please, can you pick me up? Please, can you pick me up? I don't want him to pick me up. But now that I've discovered that that's what it is, she doesn't like to be kissed and cuddled in school, which is fair enough. It's at that age where it's embarrassing. It's not cool. And he doesn't just wait for outside in the car. You go in where we are you go in and you pick him up from the school ground and he was giving her a kiss and a hug. But for her, it was embarrassing. And that's why she kept saying, mum, no, no, I don't want him. And every fortnight when he was picking up from the school, she was fighting it. And the Friday mornings when I was dropping her off, it was a tantrum in the car. No, mum, please, please, please. And it wasn't up until just recently that I was able to get it out of her. And that's what it is. Just something so minor as that. So I sent him a text message again, just saying, hey, just a heads up. She's now growing older. She's now at that age where it's embarrassing for mum and dad to give her a kiss and a hug in the schoolyard. So can you please keep that in mind? Don't take it personally. It's not an attack on you. She does it to me too. She doesn't like me giving her a kiss and a hug at school. And that was easy. I got no response back, which is fine. No response is better than an attack. But at least he understood where I was coming from and at least he realized I wasn't having a go at him. So when I told my daughter that I did that, I said, he knows, dad knows that he's now not going to give you a kiss and a hug in the school ground. So when I dropped her at school this morning, it was an easy process. It was easy. It was have a great weekend. Love you. Enjoy your day at school. Bye, mum. Love you. Enjoy your weekend. And it's never been that easy. And it's now because I've figured out these emotions and what's been holding her back and what's been stopping her from wanting to go there. And we've now got that sorted. So this is what I'm getting at with this episode. When these kids behave and they don't want to go to the other parents or when something's They're just avoiding something. There is a reason to it. And it's if there's nothing negative happening in the child's world, then there's no reason we need to give in. And it's either one, they just want a bit of control in the situation. They want to have a little bit of a say. Or two, they're not comfortable with something that's happening and it could be something so little as getting a kiss at school when they get picked up in front of their friends. And you just need to work that out and let the other parent know because they're not as comfortable speaking to that other parent who they don't see all the time as they are with you. So just remember that if the kids are crying and avoiding going to the other parent's house, what's going on? What is it? Ask them. Sit down and talk to them. What is it that's holding you back? What is it that's not making you happy or that's making you unhappy? What can we do to change this situation? And it is very easy to just cave. Kids are crying. Kids don't want something. Just cave. All right, fine. You don't want to go. Don't go. Just stay home. I have done that in the past and I regretted it as soon as I caved. I'm like, no, I shouldn't have done that, but it's too late. I've already said, yes, I can't go back on my word now and say, no, you can't. But now I don't cave. I find out why. 
what is it? What's holding her back? And the first two incidences I found out it's because she didn't like where they were going. And then I found out it was the kiss and the cuddle in the schoolyard. There's always something. There's nothing really negative happening in the kids' world at the other parent's house and there's no reason. There is just something little that they don't like and they don't know how to communicate it. Work it out with them. Find it out and then find a neutral way to let the other parent know if that child is not confident enough to talk to them. Ideally, I would have loved if my daughter told her father, but in regards to the kiss and the cuddle, I had to tell him because otherwise he would have gave her a kiss and a cuddle when she, he picked her up from school. So I had to let him know before the school pick up. But in future, she's now at an age where she does need to be able to speak up to him and she does need to be able to communicate with him. So I am encouraging these things. But the two things that I did discuss with him, I did bring it up beforehand because she didn't want to go there unless these things were resolved. She didn't want to go there knowing that she was just going to go to the beach again or go to the park again. She didn't want him to pick her up knowing that he was going to give her a kiss in front of everyone. So now that these are resolved, she was a lot more comfortable and it was at such an easy process this morning with dropping her at school without any tears, any issues, knowing that she's going to her dance this weekend. And I love it. Love it. So just keep that in mind. And when it comes to the kids having a bit of control, it also comes down to them having a little bit of a say in the matter. Ask them, what what is it that you would like? What is it that we can do differently? Do they have a phone or a device that they maybe can communicate with you when they're at the other parent's house or they can maybe communicate with their friends through Messenger, Kids Messenger or Roblox or whatever else they play these days? Is there a way that they can communicate with their friends so they don't feel so excluded when they're there? Because when they're at home with you, they probably would doing the same thing. Keep those habits going with them if that's what they do. I mean, I'm not saying that they should go there and do it all weekend, but if it's something they can do of an afternoon or a little bit in the morning when they get up, then let them have that. Let them have that. Don't deny them of taking something to the other parent's house just because it's from your house. My daughter always takes a phone with her or her iPad, so she's got something to use when she's there and something to play with and something to call me on. So ask them, keep them in the loop and give them a little bit of control of what's happening in their life. They're in a situation where Monday to Friday they're forced to go to school, they're forced to do all these activities that they don't want and then every second weekend they're forced to go to the other parent's house and they've got no say over anything. So keep in mind when kids do misbehave, a lot of it comes down to them not having any control or say in their life and something minor could be happening at the other parent's house and they're not confident enough to speak up and say what that is. It could be something like they're getting fed at dinner that they just don't like and they feel like they're forced to eat it and they don't know how to say that. They don't know how to say that that lasagna dish that they make, they absolutely hate. They don't like it and they don't know how to say that and they feel like every time they're going there, that's what they're eating. It's just an example. I mean, it could be something as simple as that. And they don't know how to say that they don't like it. So they feel like every time they're there, they've got to eat a dish that they don't like. It could be the fact that they don't have their device or a phone and they don't have any communication with their friends and they feel left out. It could be that they don't get a say in watching any of the TV shows or watching any movies. It could be that they feel like they have to go to bed early at the other parent's house and they don't like that. They want to stay up a bit later. It could be something so little And the majority of the time it is. And as I was saying, if it's nothing negative that's harming the kids in any way, then there's a very good chance that it's something so minor and little that the kids are just unsure on how to say it. They're scared on upsetting the other parent because they don't see them very often. So they don't want to say that they don't like something when they're only there maybe two days a fortnight and that might upset them. And they don't know how to say it. So they just put up and deal with it. And then when it comes to go there again, they fight it. It's our job as their parents to work out why they're so sad, why they're so upset, why they're fighting something, what's going on. And there's always something. There's always something. Give your kids that little bit of control. Give them that little bit of control. Ask them, okay, what is it? Do you want to come home earlier? Do you want... To get picked up from somewhere different. Why do you not want dad to pick you up? Why do you want mum to pick you up at this place? What is it about mum? What is it about dad? What's going on? What can we change to make this more enjoyable for you? And I love that with my daughter, we communicate about everything. I'm such a talker if you haven't picked it up already. And because it's just me and my daughter here, she cops a lot of my talking crap. I just talk, 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 talk. 
and she gets put up with it a lot of the time. Well, she has to put up with it, I should say. And a few times she'll put me in my place and she'll be like, Mum, I'm just 10 years old. I'm like, shit, okay. Good call, kid. Sorry. But I, because I talk to her so much about everything, I love that she now feels comfortable to do that with me. And it's not easy for kids to do that. Kids get quite scared. I know when I was a kid, I didn't just speak up about things. I was one of those kids at school and something happened. I was too scared to speak up. You know, I was too scared to put my hand up in class. I was one of those kids. And it is a scary thing. As you, When you're a kid, it's quite intimidating speaking up to an adult. It's quite scary. So we need to talk to them through that. We need to work with them through that process. What's going on? Why are you misbehaving? Why are we having this tantrum? What is it about this situation we can change? So that's pretty much, in a nutshell, a big reason why kids misbehave. Now, there are other things that do happen that do upset kids and that may cause them to be upset. And it's very important to be able to talk to our kids through these things. So when they do have these emotions and these little things that they're bottling up, that they don't just one day hold on to it and then they just randomly burst and take it out at the wrong person at the wrong time. We need to be able to communicate with them so they can express the way they feel instead of expressing it in behaviors that make you worry or make you think something's wrong or make them look like the naughty kid. Kids don't know how to manage things in the right way sometimes and it's our job as their parents to guide them and to help them. And it's hard. They get to that age where, you know, they get sassy and they don't like you giving them advice and they don't like you helping them. But you just got to give them that little reminder. You know what, kid? I'm your mum. I'm your mum or your dad, whoever's talking. I have a bit of a say here. Yes, you do have a little bit of say in your life. But just remember, I'm the parent and I'm here to help you. So when your child all of a sudden starts displaying behaviours of refusing to go to the other parent's house or they start fighting against things that they don't want to do and it's just making it hard for you and they just start misbehaving and acting up all of a sudden when it comes to a certain topic. We need to work out why. It's our job as their parent to help them communicate what's going on. Kids don't know how to sit down and say, Mum, can I talk to you about how I feel today? Very few kids would do that. Strangely enough, my daughter is one of those who does do that. As soon as I pick her up from school, she's like, Mum, can I talk to you about my day? Yes, yes, you can. Let's talk. Let's chat. And I love that. Love that she's a talker. It is our job to encourage that. It is our job to teach them to speak up about things. And not bottle things up. And that's what those behaviours come down to. It's them bottling up something that's happened, which could be something so minor, but they're scared to say it. They're scared to talk about it. They're scared to upset the other parent. So they just don't say it. But when it comes down to going there, they just fight it. And they put on a big tantrum and they put on a big act. And you're very quick to think, okay, what is going on in the other parent's house? I'm not happy here. If they're not cr- wanting to go and they're crying, something's happening. This is not okay. Yep, you can stay home. I'm not, that's not good. I'm not going to have you going if you're going to cry. It's very easy to brush it off like that and just ignore the reason for why they're crying and ignore the underlying issue and just give in to their emotions. Say, yep, okay, sure. You you don't want to go. You're crying. You're sad. You clearly don't want to go. Why though? What is it? What's going on? What's happening for them to react that way? And as I've said in multiple times in this episode, unless it's something of serious behavior, then there's no reason to give in. It's usually something that you can quite easily resolve with the other parent. But when the kids do start reacting like this, don't get on your mum guard or your dad guard and then pull out your phone and message the other parent saying, what the hell's going on? So-and-so is crying. She's refusing to go there. What the hell have you done? That is not going to be productive and that's not going to resolve anything. They're just going to straight away get on the defense with you and say, well, what have you done? What are you talking about? You're full of shit. I haven't done anything. If they're at your house and they're crying, then obviously you've done something, blah, 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 blah. You don't want to get on that bandwagon. Don't do that. If they're crying, you need to sort it out with the kids. There's a reason why the kid's crying. The other parent's not crying. The kid is. What is going on with the kids? Okay. Don't brush off the underlying issue and it happens so much these days you see it something happens and instead of looking at why people just straight away get on the defense and go yep okay sure no worries you're crying not allowing it because they don't like their ex 
They don't have a good relationship with the ex. The kid's crying. They're like, okay, good. You don't like him. You don't like him either. I don't like him. So sure, just stay here. And they just get on that whole bandwagon with everyone hating the ex. And then it just, they push their opinions of them onto the kids. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. Like I've said in so many, so many occasions, on so many different episodes, I don't have a positive relationship with my ex. Mind you, I just got a nice text message from him then saying, okay, thank you. See, I'm now at that point where I get pleases and thank yous because I don't tolerate bullshit from him. And you've got to just cut off your emotions from what happened between you and them, not what your co-parenting arrangement is about. Don't just straight away think something negative about your ex if your kids start crying, refusing to go to the other parent's house. Something could have happened. Something could have happened. But if they're crying with you about something that's happened there, then it's your job to step in and sort that out. So to sum it up, this really comes down to us as parents having a good communication level with our kids, being able to talk to them when things are not right and teaching them to speak up to us and speak up with us when something's not right on their end, encouraging that with them. And that's what a lot of these times these behaviors come about when it comes to co-parenting and then not wanting to go to the other parent's house and then fighting things and getting angry and moody. And as I said, this is not the only reason why kids muck up. There's a lot of other things involved. I'm just touching on today the behaviors when they're all of a sudden mucking up and not wanting to go to the other parent's house. Kids misbehave for a whole lot of reasons. And a lot of the times, it's never done with bad intention. It's just the kids wanting to feel loved, wanting to be included, wanting to be heard. And sometimes when they're not being heard and they're not feeling included because they've lost control over their life and they don't have a say of what's happening at the other parent's house, they'll then start to muck up or they start to misbehave or they'll have a little tantrum. So when the kids are going to the other parent's house and they start to have a little tantrum and they start to play the poor me card and you know, give you the guilt trip and not want to go, nope, not go to dad's house, not go to mum's house, nope, staying here, and they start crying. Instead of just so easy giving in, work it out, work it out. And if you're someone that loves your kid free time and you don't get a lot of kid free time to yourself, then don't give in. Don't give in. You need your time. You've got to set your boundaries with your kids too. No, sorry, I love you to bits, but this is your weekend with dad or your weekend with mum. I've got a lot of stuff I've got to get done this weekend. You can call me whenever you want. Otherwise, I'll see you on Sunday night or Monday or whenever it is. You've got to stand firm and don't give in to their little behaviors because they know how to milk us. They know how to milk us. They know how to get exactly what they want from us. And if it means putting on some fake tears, if it means putting on the pulling out the bottom lip and acting a little bit sad or having a little tantrum, They'll do what they can to get their way, to have a little bit of control and have a little bit of say. So next time your kid does this and has a little tantrum over something, sit down with them. Where's this coming from? What's going on? All right, guys, I'm going to wrap that up here. I think you've got the point here. So just remember when your kids are fighting to go to the other parent's house, don't cave in. Work it out. What's going on? Have a good chat with them and keep that open relationship going because that is what we are about here at Life After Plus One. We are about empowering you and encouraging you to have a happier, healthy life as a single parent. And if it means finding ways to avoid the kid drama and the behaviors and the crying and the tangents, then sit down and have that chat with them. Let's work it out and let's make that co-parenting arrangement and that transition phase a lot easier because this morning I had the easiest transition process ever where I dropped her off to school with zero tears zero questions there wasn't even a question no mum I don't want to go are you picking me up today there was nothing there was none of that it was bye love you have a great weekend I'm like holy smokes who is this kid I've never ever had that and it's because we worked out why we worked out what she was avoiding and what was going wrong and what she wasn't enjoying and what she wasn't liking. And it's been resolved. And if something else does come up where she goes through that phase and she doesn't want to go there, then I'll sit down and have this conversation again with her. Okay, so that's what it's about. Making that co-parenting transition so much easier to make your life easier without the drama and the stress. So when you are kid free, you're not worried if they're crying or sad or upset. You're enjoying your kid free time. So on that note, it is a Friday here. 
I've dropped my daughter off at school and she is at her dad's for this weekend and I'm going to enjoy my kid free weekend. So thank you all. I do hope you got something from this and it's all about making your single parent journey so much easier. If you have anything else that you need, you want to reach out with a question, you want to share your story, if you need a bit more support to make your single parent journey a little bit easier, then jump onto my website. I have quite a few different programs available there that can help make your single parent journey so much easier and enjoyable. Once again, thank you all. I hope you got something from this. And until next time, I'll be in your ears then. Love you all. Thank you for joining us on the Life After Plus One podcast. If you loved what you heard today and looking for some further support, then jump onto our website, lifeafterplusone.com. Plus, don't forget to check out our Instagram page for further resources and inspo. You can find all the links in the show notes. And remember, you're not alone on this path. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode. And in the meantime, keep thriving, keep growing and keep exploring your amazing life after plus one.